Do you want to see how to make that into a fully working Botan box? Hi folks, good morning. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a batch of Biltong boxes, plastic Biltong boxes for any DIY people. I've got six plastic boxes, they're 65 litre. I find the 65 litre are nice size, you can fit about three and a half kilos of, of meat in them. Bigger than that you can go to 85 litre. Uh, it's okay, but it's just a bit bigger and more bulky. These fit so nicely in a little corner of a room and, and, and what have you. So to start with, I always put a big sheet of cardboard down on top of my workbench. I've got to keep it in my workshop and that nice and clean. And then after that, I get my templates out. Now, because I make a lot of built-on boxes, I have to have templates. I can get my box and I start marking. Obviously, you guys won't have any templates. But as long as you get some holes in the one side, a few holes like that, and then another bigger hole on this side where the fan goes, that's all you need. Honestly, it's not a big major problem at all. You're not building a space rocket. It's just a built-on dryer. So let's get the first one done. So I've got a few different boxes that I use. So I've got a few different colors. So I just mark according to my template, just a few dots like that, and then I will come and drill those. Basically, do some holes and it'll work. As long as you have airflow going through the box from side to that side where the fan is going to suck the air out, it's all you're needing. There's something else we've got to do. The fan has got a little grate cover on it. So I just put that in the middle, line it up with the middle with a little hole that I'm going to be doing in the middle and just mark the four places for the screws to go through, which go through the fan cover. So yeah, that's got to do that as well. Okay, so you're probably wondering why I just draw a little rough circle there. That is the center of the fan where I've made the dot. I've done the four whole four places for the, the screws that hold the fan. I get a big 80 mil cutter and it cuts the hole. That's why I just do that. So I know there's a big hole that side. That's all. And just like that, all six are done, all marked. And now I can put the templates away till next time. And now I can then carry on and start drilling. Okay, so what are you gonna need? I use a drill to just make a small hole first, just as a pilot hole. Then I will use this 25 millimeter hole saw for cutting the, the one side holes. And then this 80 mil hole saw for cutting where the fan goes. I then use this electric drill with the little rotary file on because I use oval conduit piping, conduit. Uh, basically because it's a bit stronger because of the cross section. You can use round, you can use wooden dowels, whatever. So I, I just make, make my holes with that first. I make them a little bit oval with that and then it, it will fit, those will fit in. You obviously need your fan, your light fitting with a 40 watt old type light bulb, or you can use a 15 or 20 watt halogen light bulb. You can't use any of these LEDs or long lasting globes in them because they don't get hot. You then need a plug, you need your, your fan cover, 
you need a double switch, you need a switch box, you need your cable, and you need your, a few screws and nuts and bolts and whatnot. So that's everything I will be using. I'll just go through it one by one. One very important thing for drilling, you've got to drill onto a piece of wood. You've got to hold the box down onto the wood so that, and just drill slowly, otherwise it's going to crack on you. So just be careful with that. Drill slowly, nice sharp drill and it'll be fine. Right then, let's give it a start. So just press the plastic down, put the drill through, fairly slow. Right, so these holes here are all going to be 25 millimeter using the hole saw. I don't do them now. I drill all the small holes first, all the pilot holes, and then I do all the, the bigger holes. If you find it does crack, so it's, let's say it's cracked to the middle of the plastic and there's a little crack going outwards, get a small drill and just drill at the end of the crack and that'll stop it from going any further. Sometimes I miss the holes, but it doesn't really matter if they're a little bit off. These four here for the fan have to be accurate. Okay, so now we're going to be doing the bigger holes. We've done all of the six boxes with the pilot holes, and I'll do the bigger holes. So I'm going to use my 25 mil hole saw you can use anywhere basically from 20 to 30 mil i had a 25 mil so i use that and it works so just sometimes the little plastic stick in them in the end of the tool so you then got to get a piece of wire with a little hooky on and take it out like that Sometimes they push out, sometimes they don't. So this side I've got the one hole for the wires to go into the switch. Then I have the big hole for the fan. Got to do this fairly carefully. can catch there we are that's perfect right so that's the big hole done and that's the small hole done small hole done on that side now I've got to do where the hanger hanger rods go now because I use these oval bits of conduit for my hangers for my rods I've got to make the oval hole, obviously. You can use a 16 millimeter dowel, which is ideal. Then you can just use a 16 millimeter hole saw. I started this way and I just keep going. So I get my rotary file. Make the hole. Pull it down a bit. And that now fits in there. Do another one. Hopefully this one goes straight. There we are. And that will fit in there. Right, let me carry on. Right, that's it. Hold done. Now we've got to tidy up all the holes. They've all got a bit of stuff sticking off out of them. Nice sharp blade. And then we do 
the side. And once we give it a good rub, it'll all be fine. Now the big hole and the smaller hole, so you just got to tidy them up a little bit. Sometimes the, the cutter makes a bit of a mess inside as well. So take off there. Then the smaller ones. Just run a, a knife against it. And then on the inside. That's it. All holes done. Righty ho. Let's get started. So I always start with my fan. And the switch box. Two little screws in the switch box. The back is open for the wires to go in and out. Switch box goes there. Right, then I get nut and washer on each one. I'm using four millimeter bolts, well, machine screws. Uh, long ones, and then I think they're 30 mil. And then the shorter ones are anywhere from 12 to 16 millimeter for the box and the light fitting. Finally, right, so that's all of those on. Now to tighten them up. Got a little screwdriver, little socket on a, socket on a, on a screwdriver handle. Can't do the fan too tight, otherwise the the little the little brackets will break. I have had them break in the past. Right, so those are on. Now to the light. So we've connected our cable onto the light. So we put our cable through first. And a couple of screws. Nut and washer. You know how it goes. So the cable comes out of the switch, comes down, back into the box. I then get a little bit of tape to keep it all nice and tidy and not rub on anywhere. And I put a bit of gaffer tape on there like it, and it just holds it in place. Okay, so I run the cable along the bottom, and then I put a cable tie at the top where the fan wires are as well to hold them all in. And make sure we've got enough sticking out. And that cable is nicely situated inside and that's it okay so for the electrics now i get the the neutral for the lamp for the light and for the fan the fan doesn't matter because i always use a 220 volt fan so it doesn't matter which way around the wires go but also then your your light and your fan are all 220 volt some people use a 12 volt fan from a computer and then a 220 volt light and you just can't mix those voltages up properly. So I always use a 220 volt. So the neutrals are together. Then on the switch, the fan The other wire from the fan and a, 
power supply to the light will be taken at the same time. So once, once the power goes to the fan, it also then goes this way to the other switch, which is the light. So a live comes in here normally. So it'll come through the switch and then operate the fan and then go to the light. So you can't operate the light if the fan isn't working. Basically, it's just a safety so that the box doesn't overheat if that happens. You know, if the fan isn't switched on, the box will overheat. So you put them in there. You need to get somebody who knows what they're doing, if you don't, to do your electrics for you. Right, so then the positive side for the light will go into the second switch and will then work when the fan is on, as I said. The power in, the neutral, I will put to the neutrals of the everything else. And the power goes to switch one, which is for the fan as well. Right, so that's in, that's in, that's in, that's in there. Perfect, so now we can put all those inside. Cover it up, put the screws in, and then put the plug on. And just like that, all the electrics are done. Right, the big test. So, fan on. You can hear it. Light on. Aha, light off. Now if you switch the fan off, the light also goes off. So that's just that safety aspect. So there we are, that's working. Okay, now to put in the hanging rails. So put them through. Some people will can like to seal them there with a silicon sealer. Or they just leave them a bit longer and they just hope they don't fall out, which they shouldn't. What I do, I've got a little hole drilled in the end of each one. So I thread a piece of wire through all of them and just bend it up, basically, so you can take it apart, so you can clean it as and when you need it. Always need to clean it out before and after you use it. So, yeah, you just can't be too careful with bacteria and everything. You've got to keep it nice and clean. That's why plastic is ideal, or stainless steel, obviously. Um, and a lot of people use wood. I don't use wood at all because of all of the nooks and crannies that the bugs, the germs, the, the, the mold, mold spores especially can, can get in and live. Once you get them in, it's very difficult to get rid of them. Okay, so my rods are in, and now I'll thread a piece of, I've got stainless steel wire that I've used for years. You've got to find the hole sometimes. Okay, so that's all the way through. I then bend it up and clip it in, bend it up and clip it in. So that's not gonna go anywhere. And then I'll do the same on the other side. So now you are ready to hang your biltong. Once you've made your biltong and spiced it, let it marinate for a couple of days in the fridge. You can then put a double layer of kitchen towel in the bottom to catch any drips. You then get your hooks, hook your meat on, and put them on. All of the Things like that, of the dogs. 
I actually sell the hooks as well, so I'll put a link to those. Okay, now, so you've hung all your meat. About three and a half kilos fit in this box nicely. Don't hang any directly over the lamp. You can put a little bit of foil over the lamp just to stop any drips going on it, which is a good idea. Because you're not going to use your lamp for the first 12 hours, 12 to 18 hours at least. If you're in an area that's fairly warm and the box is inside a, a house or a heated garage or something like that, you don't even need a light at all. You just need the fan. If it's outside in a shed or if it's in a cold room somewhere, then you will need your light. Your light basically just warms up the air a little bit, drives off some of the moisture, keeps your humidity down a little bit, and then it flows right through from that side all the way through out the box. So you put your bolt on here, hang it all, all on the hooks. I use different colored hooks because I hang up 300 kilos of meat at a time in a slightly bigger box than this. <laughs> and I, I do different, I do plain, I do all, I do chili, I do barbecue, chutney, I do, I do all sorts. So I've got color coded hooks. I've just got a little piece of uh, heat shrink, electrician heat shrink and put it on and I've got a little little torchy thing and I, and I just let, let them clamp on there so so I know what's what is what and I use the same color color code for everything all the time right so first 12 14 hours don't use a light as I say thereafter it's 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 you can if if, if needed so you switch on the fan and you leave it when it's time up you can switch your light on and say after your first day you then take this row of biltong and you hang it on there and this row goes one back this row goes one back this goes one back and that goes one back and then say 12 hours later this one goes to there this one goes to there, to there, to there, to there. Just to rotate it around, 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 around like that. Another 12 hours, move that one to there, and you know how it goes, just, just keep going like that. And you'll get a very nice, even cure to your biltong. Curing time, about four days, three to four days. However, you're always going to have little thin ones, which you can nibble on at least after two days after the first day if you want a nice steak if you've got some really nice meat you can hang it up with with all your spices on and after the first day take it out and just chop it into little finger pieces of steak and fry them literally 30 seconds each side and they are beautiful they really are anyway so that's how how all of that gets set up you would put your lid on obviously and put it away and make a built on If you're in an area where there's a lot of flies and they can get into the room or whatever where the bolt tongue box is, on the front here that lets the air in, you can just put a, a screen of some sort, put a mosquito netting, something like that, and just to keep the flies out. So it's, it's very simple. Keep everything simple. Don't overcomplicate things. You don't need any temperature gauges. You don't need any humidity meters or anything. If you find the biltong gets a little bit hard on the outside and still quite wet on the inside, it means it's been too hot. So either leave the bulb off or it's, it's in, a, in a really hot area in the, in the, in the house or, or wherever. Just switch the box off for about 8, 10, 12 hours. Just keep checking it and the moisture will sort of even itself out to a certain extent it won't fully do it but to a certain extent it will will work spices i will put a recipe up in the description of all the spices and basically i've got a nice big website with all sorts of stuff on so i hope this has helped and you can make some nice built on a little bit more about the 
hanging rails. If you're using wood, you can use, I would say 12 millimeter, half inch minimum size. 16 would be ideal, but 12 would, would be good as well. Now, when you're making dry horse or drill horse, which is your dried sausage, you can hang it over these. You don't need to use it on the hook or anything. You can just go straight over these like that to hang it, cut it to the right length. We'll work out the, the, the length, cut it to length, and then hang them over here. The only thing is you're going to have to move them each day. And, but they, they, that's not a problem. Once they're loose, they're loose and they, they will sort of flatten out on the top. They won't stay big and round oh, where, where it goes over the top. So that's just something else for, for dry horse. If you're using wood, I would cover the wooden dowel with some foil, just so that the blood and that doesn't go into the wood and stain, stain it. So, okay, that's just a couple more tips for you. Okay, folks, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like the, the video and subscribe to my channel if you're not subscribed. If you are, thank you very much. And see you on the next one.